guys, Lisa here. Thanks for joining me. Today, I'm going to share with you our technique for doing smoke tumblers. I previously did a 20 ounce, a 20 skinny from Maker Flow Crafts. I absolutely love their tumblers, and if you haven't gone to their website before to check out their prices, you need to do that. You cannot beat the prices. And today, I'm going to be using one of the Maker Flow's 30 ounce. So, and with Maker Flow, they all come with the box, the straw, the care cards, the lids. So, I've taken my tumbler out, prepared it, and I put the box away. This is a powder coated tumbler. So, what I want to do is go into the kitchen and lightly sand it. Let me grab my sanding block. And I'm going to use a sanding block so I can wet sand it because it's much quicker. It's just a lot easier that way. So, I'm going to run in under the running water sand it. I'm going to run my hands over it until it feels really smooth. It's not going to take but just a few seconds and you'll feel the powder coating come off and you will be left with a white tumbler. Okay, so I'll get that in just a second. We're also going to be using some coconut oil. This is more of a solid form like you would find in a lard. Got me a handy pair of scissors. I've got a candle. Now I'm going to be using a taper candle, not a pillar candle, because if the pillar candle is in a container, glass, whatever it comes in, there's no oxygen to get around the top. So we're going to be using a regular taper candle, a remkin, a butter knife. Now you don't have to use all of these techniques. I'm going to show you how to get a light smoke and how to get a heavy smoke. So there's different ways of doing it with each of these things. So you choose what's right for you. We're also going to be using just a clear glaze. Whatever you've got on hand that you're used to using with your tumblers will be fine. Okay, so let me go in and clean my tumbler and get it sanded, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've sanded my tumbler, and because I'm going to be working with an open flame and clear glaze, I'm going to remove the aerosol. Since it's flammable, we don't want anything dangerous in the area. And you do not have to worry about, if you're going to use a butter knife, about smelting. It's not going to get hot enough to melt this metal so you're inhaling anything. So there's no need to worry about that. Now what we're going to do, I've got some PVC cutters. I'm just going to use these since I have them on hand and it's, they seem to be a little bit easier for me. You can use just a standard kitchen knife. Um, what I'm going to do is cut the candle so the top of the candle meets the top of the rimkin. Let's see, and kind of mark it a little bit. If you get it too long, you can go in and just let it melt down a little bit. It'll be fine. Okay. Oh, let me grab my scissors. Okay, we're gonna cut the wick. And see, there's my wick down in there. You may have to carve around yours a little bit. Um, remove a little bit of the wax or just put a little bit of heat to it and your flame will come up. And you can see this candle, I've been using it for quite a while. I'm going to pop it right in the lard that I have, or the coconut oil that I have put in my remkin. So I want it to actually melt the oil. I'm going to press it down around it. This is my old, the one that I have been using, and I just keep it right here in my front drawer with my candle and my lighter. So I just pull it out anytime I need to use it, and when my candle gets low, I just fill it up again, pull the old candle out, pop a new one in it. So we'll get that out of our way. I love working with the powder coated, especially on these. They're no different than working with stainless steel. So I didn't have to color the spray paint it. I just needed to sand it and you can't see sand marks on it. So for this particular technique, a powder coated is great. And really you can do anything with a powder coated that you can do with stainless steel. Okay, get my candle going. Light the other one. And I should have put my gloves on because if I happen to touch the oil, I don't want to get it on my hands. The reason that I have chose coconut oil is coconut oil has a very low smoke point. And what I mean by that is when the heat gets to the 
coconut oil, when it starts heating up, what's the lowest temperature oil that you have that will smoke the quickest? And in my case, it's coconut oil. So you can Google smoke points of oil and just kind of see what's in your cabinet. If you don't have um, I said more solid type lard form or coconut oil, you can use regular oil. Um, and that's not even necessary. So to start, I'm gonna show you how to get a low flame, something that if you just want light smoke, we're gonna start with the butter knife. And if you can see when I put the butter knife over it, I hope you can see it in the video, it very, very lightly creates some smoke. The more you push it in, you get that little puff of smoke when you first put it in. So you can get smoke, but not a lot. Okay, so we're gonna try to help our oil and get some of this oil. Now that's if I was just using a candle. So if I can get some of this oil burning down, I'm gonna get smoke quicker and I'm gonna get a blacker smoke. Okay, at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit more smoke from the melted oil. That's still not enough. So let's see what it does to our tumbler. You wanna make sure that you hold your tumbler away far enough so you don't hit the wax, because if you hit the wax, the epoxy's not gonna stick to the tumbler. So I wanna see, let's just do a little piece here. If I tilt it, you can get a little bit more smoke up, but I'm kind of struggling to get smoke. So this is possible. Now let's see what happens if I add a little bit of oil to the end of my knife. So if you had a liquid oil, you could put you a little bit in a cup and just do it. Let's get it hot. And you can see, I hope, that I'm getting a little bit more intense heat. Let's go again. There, so I'm kind of getting bigger puffs, but I still have to be down towards it. So I'm gonna let it sit another minute and get a little bit more oil going. Okay, so now that my candle is burning good and my oil is melted, if I take the two and I put them together, I get a, a lot bigger poof of black smoke coming out. So I'm gonna pop it in, if I can quit blowing on it. Pop it in, get that big black smoke, and we're gonna capture it. That's it. Do it again. And you can just turn your tumbler in circles and create patterns. Make sure we get the bottom. So it's easy to control it if you just play with your flame a little bit and kind of figure out what oils are pushing you to where you are getting the amount of flame and smoke that you want. Let's get in our middle area. You just have to be really careful not to hit your tumbler at this point because you don't want wax on it. If you bump it in one little spot, that may be a spot where your decal can go We got a good one that time. Get around our rims. Get the back side more. Oh, we're getting some really pretty flames and some smoky effects. Now this will smear, so you have to be very careful and try very hard not to touch it. And you know us crafters, we love touching the wet paint and all that stuff when we can. Okay, and I think I'm gonna leave it there. All right, at this point, I need to seal it. To seal it, I'm just gonna use Krylon Clear Glaze. It's just a light glaze. Whatever you have is gonna be okay. You wanna make sure that one, you, uh, Keep your spray cans and stuff shaken because they will settle and then you'll get spots on your cup and you're not going to get even sprays. So that's for your adhesives, your anything that comes in your spray cans. And an arm's length away, and I'm going to do it one light coat to start. So the smoke effect isn't like alcohol inks 
and things of that nature that you really need to let dry a little bit, you're fine just to go seal it right after you finish. This point, I'm gonna let it sit for about 20 minutes for this to dry, and then I'm gonna give it another coat. Okay, guys, it's been about 20 minutes. I'm gonna go back, lightly coat it again, which will be fine, and it will be ready for its epoxy. I'm gonna let it sit for a couple of hours to dry, just to make sure that it's good and dry and my epoxy has a nice dry surface to go on. And there you have it. One gorgeous smoke effect tumbler by MakerFlow. Thank you, MakerFlow. I absolutely love your tumblers. I cannot wait to get this epoxy. Um, we have another one in the, that is drying now that's gonna be a fireman's tumbler. So it's gonna be that really intense orange and black. So I'm excited about that one. Okay guys, I hope this helps. And until next time, be blessed.